Axial Fest is five weeks away and I need a truck for it. Underneath here is the Base Camp Builders Kit. I did a video on this right when it came out and I needed to turn it into a project of some sort because I wanted a truck for Axial Fest and this is a great base to build off of. So I'm going to take this new platform and a body that HPI recently brought back from the dead. This is the Cadillac Escalade body made for the Savage. And the reason that I picked up an Escalade body is because way back in the mid 2000s, a guy by the name of Excessive Fire on RC Crawler built a truck that he called the Hackalack, or the Hack was more of how it was referred to over time. But it used a Cadillac Escalade front hood on a buggy chassis. And it was built on top of an SCX-10, not an SCX-10 2, but the original SCX-10 going way back with the SCX-10 3 Base Camp Builders Kit out now. Seemed like, you know what, we'll make a new modern version of this. That's the plan. I'm gonna try and throw, you know, some modern tools and twists at it, but I'm gonna try and get this done relatively quick without going crazy, crazy on it. Crazy, crazy. So I'm gonna dive in, try and get as much done as possible, showing you some clips along the way. Hopefully you guys enjoy it, and hopefully in the end, this project turns out the way that I hope that it will, in tribute to the original hack. Like many of my projects recently, I started off by 3D scanning. This time I'm using the CR Scan Ferret. It's their most inexpensive scanner that you can get and it's, I've had really good luck with it. I'm using this for reference details mainly. It saves me a bunch of time with actually drawing the existing parts. And while I was at it, I also scanned the body. The next step from there was designing up the rest of this build. This is going to be a caged project and what I wanted to do was incorporate designs from actually using CNC laser cut parts as well as the regular hand fabricated tubing. The tubing itself you can't really just send to a laser cutter at this time at least. So I went through and I designed up how I wanted this cage to look. Dodging the front steering servo, making up slider mounts, things like that. And then I would take all of those parts and send those off to send, cut, send. But being that I was going to have to send off the CAD data before, wait for those parts to come back, I needed to make sure that I was building accurately. So I went through and designed these very elaborate fixtures that allow the tubes to just sit perfectly, exactly where they're supposed to sit, ensuring that when those parts finally did arrive, everything just dropped into place. Now, to make it easier on myself, I made individual tube templates as well. This allowed me to double check that the bends were spot on and that the overall length was also correct before I even put it into the jig. This took extra time on the front side on design work, but it actually saved me a ton of time during fabrication and it absolutely skyrocketed my accuracy. During this project, I got this Bamboo X1 Carbon and it was a, a game changer in terms of speed and also print quality. It just worked so well. These jigs printed so quickly. Being that these are just 3D printed PLA, they are one time use for me. Yeah, they can melt a little bit, but since I'm TIG welding, this all goes pretty quickly and melting isn't that big of a concern. These are some of those templates that show you know, I'm using them to check the radius of a bend, the overall length of a tube before it gets cut and put in place. I'm using an AHP Welders 203XI. That's my, the TIG welder I picked up about a year ago and it's a great unit. I've really liked using it. Once the tubes are all in the jig, I just zip tie them in place to hold them secure so that I can TIG weld without anything moving on me. Once the CNC laser parts came in and I already had most of the cage built, I just had to hope that everything worked. My slider mounts on this were kind of an interesting two piece design. Rather than counting on them being bent, I 3D printed a little jig to hold them at exactly the right angle. That way I could hold the two pieces of metal in that jig and then TIG weld them 
and I just knew that they would be exactly as I designed. I had to make one of these jigs for each side of the slider. They were a one-time use. I had to break them coming off, but they worked out just like I had hoped. I had some temporary 3D printed sliders on the chassis just to hold the tubing in place. And once I took those off and put the laser cut CNC parts in there, they were just dead on. Now I scanned the hood and I ended up redesigning it. Rather than using the Lexan, I just used it as a base to design my own. And then I decided to do some forged carbon fiber. And I used the same method that I've used several times before, which is two half 3D printed molds with a silicone insert. I use the silicone as my backer to actually press the forged carbon in place to push out the excess and in general, this is a super easy process that doesn't take any special tools other than the CAD and you know know-how and a 3D printer. But beyond that, this process is way simpler than it may look. Just add a coat of resin to the inside of the mold, drop my chopped toe in there before I actually use a backing layer of twilled carbon you know, mat just as a, a binder to hold everything together, add a little bit more strength and just evenness all over. After that, drop in the silicone, you know, inside of the male plug to the mold. I 3D print a pressure plate to just help even everything out. And then just use some C clamps and let it sit for 24 hours. After that, I just remove it from the mold and it's a little ugly, but it just takes a little bit of sanding and trimming before it's all finished up. I am welding this chassis partially directly to the SCX3 frame rails. Not everywhere because I didn't want to, you know, melt some pieces of plastic, but up front it was just kind of the option that it was going to work easiest for me. I used some heat blocking putty for the very first time. This is a reusable putty you just put around there and it helps soak up the heat so it doesn't melt some of those existing pieces. All of the parts of this chassis were in great shape after I got done TIG welding those front tubes in place. The bumper was integrated into those parts as well, made for a pretty simple fabrication. After that, the chassis was pretty much wrapped up and I just needed to disassemble and then go through and do some cleaning before everything got painted. I just put a wire wheel in my drill press and that, hold, that holds one side of it while I move the chassis around to get it all polished up. From there, I just go straight to a quick drying primer and then a metallic wheel paint to finish it off. I did want to put an interior in this and I wanted to keep the depth of the interior there. But being that this has got the Basecamp LCXU transmission there, it's pretty big. So trying to get around that motor and the dig servo, a little bit difficult, let alone the spur gear size and things. So I decided to kind of work around them and incorporate them more than trying to just totally cover it. So I made up some braces that mounted to these front and rear laser cut bulkheads, made a carbon fiber floor that would bolt to that mount. And then I incorporated the seats over top of the dig servo and a bulge to hold or you know cradle that motor. Yes, it's still exposed slightly, but it's not terrible in my opinion. Then I came up with a dash detail and steering column. I put a GPS antenna. And the only thing that kind of left was that transmission. So rather than totally hiding it, I just made a small little piece that went over that transmission that I could incorporate to look like a center console. 
it is a simple piece, but I think that it helps blend in that very large LCXU transmission. Then I designed front and rear inner fenders for this project, and I incorporated a front battery tray that braces between those inner fenders. The 3D scan data is what makes all of this so much easier. You can tell where the holes in the chassis are, even if they're not a through hole in the scan itself. And you can use that dodging around shock towers. And this was a first shot worked out design. Did the same thing for the rear, dodging the rear shock towers and these bolt in place to those laser cut bulkheads that I did in the front and rear of the interior cabin. A lot of these designs keyed off of those points that I designed into the cage. And I didn't have to modify any of the design because the jigs helped keep everything properly in place. I also threw some rear exhaust detail into this to just kind of take up some of that space in the back side of this cage. It was just kind of empty. For the floor of this, I decided on 0.5 millimeter thick carbon fiber. Super light, super easy to cut, it keeps the floor height low, and it's surprisingly rigid once you're just using a small section and very lightweight items on top of it. I've got a Stepcraft D600 CNC router that I use here. Helps to be able to create these parts in-house, no waiting, and keeps the cost down quite a bit as well. CNC routers are the most basic style of CNC, but they can still be pretty powerful. I use PCB cutting bits for carbon fiber. Cuts well, it doesn't leave a burred edge and everything looks pretty nice. In addition to the floor, I also cut a front firewall. This goes between that battery compartment area and the back of the dash, just to help separate everything. You won't see the wire from the battery tray or anything like that ever pop up. I sized the holes in those bulkheads to be tapped. So some of these ended up being through holes, so I just needed to drill those out to a, a, roughly an eighth of an inch so I could throw a three millimeter screw through those holes. Assembling the interior is pretty simple. There's a lower mount and the seats sandwich in that carbon fiber floor and it just all gets held together there with four screws. You can see the cutout for the dig servo there as well. What I did overlook is the fact that once it's assembled, it will not fit through the windshield. So disassemble and reinstall individually. Rear inner fenders just slide into place. These are printed on the Bamboo X1 Carbon in the PETG uh, carbon fiber filament, which is a little bit more heat resistant than regular PLA. I'm not 100% sure of all of the benefits of the carbon fiber version of the PETG over standard PETG, but it does feel a little bit more rigid than typical PETG. Maybe that's just a placebo effect. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm really liking the finish. The rear inner fenders also incorporated some mounting of that rear RC four wheel drive fuel cell, just an aluminum piece that adds some extra detail that I enjoy. You can see that the floor has nice depth, allowed me to put in some nice sized seats that look appropriate. You can see how it goes over the top of that Fusion Pro motor in there, 
again, the Fusion Pro motor looks pretty decent, so I'm not too worried about having to hide it. The dash design is a multi-piece. The mount itself, the top of the dashboard, and the steering column all sandwiched together and then are held by a few screws. That carbon fiber firewall gets sandwiched between that dash mount and the cage itself. I ideally wanted to print that GPS antenna out of some white, either PLA or PETG, something like that, but just ran out of time to reprint and didn't get to it before I reassembled it. The front fender slash battery tray system here all just gets kind of dropped in and finagled around. You can see I've got a clamp there for the Velcro strap to hold everything in place. Now, since I decided to forge carbon the hood, felt like I needed to put in some sort of 3D grill as well. I actually did the design of this grill on a live video on one of the Sundays for STL Sunday. Not something I had a plan in place for in my head really before we got started, we just dove in. The grill design came out pretty well. It's fairly simple overall, but to try and make sure that it all worked well, I also designed a template that I could 3D print to make sure that I placed the cuts for this thing in the proper place. So it just outlines the actual cutout that the grill has. Now there is a lip around the grill, so I didn't have to be 100% dead on, but as long as I was within about a millimeter, then I was gonna be okay. The 3D print of the grill again was done in that carbon fiber PETG. Test fitting that the cutout was going to be the proper size. I just dropped that grill into that template for the cut before I went and attached that template to the hood. I double checked that the trimming and sanding of my hood was going to be appropriate before I attached the template to the grill with the double sided woodworking tape. With the template attached, I used my rotary tool and the same bit that I used to cut carbon fiber on the CNC router. Just a three millimeter PCB cutting tool. Makes pretty short work. Make sure you wear a respirator when you're doing this, it's important. I also did it just on the outside of my garage there just to try and keep some airflow going, but proper PPE. template made for accurate work and everything popped in on the very first shot. I wanted to add some extra bling factor to the hood and so I decided to use some metal flake from Paint Huffer and an extra coat of resin. I mixed in a handful of this you know sparkle or flake whatever it is and just brushed it on. It's obviously not an even coat, but that was planned. I just put it on heavy so that I could wet sand it later. The high gloss really makes that forge carbon pop and I like the little bit of gold flake in there. Making body panels is one of my least favorite things, but it has to be done. Again, a lot of these laser cut parts were designed to be tapped. I needed to locate the holes properly in the rear and they only use an M2. Couldn't really see it to be able to get a punch on it. So I modified an M2 screw to have a point so I could thread it in place, hold the panel over it, and then give it a little tap with a mallet so that I could 
find that center properly. I did the first side of this panel on a Friday Night Live, so I didn't get the video of it happening for you know, this type of production, but I did video the process for the other side. I used one of the spare laser cut rear panels so that I could locate the other hole needed to drill. I use this transfer vinyl to make my panel templates. This is a clear vinyl that goes over top of your pre-cut vinyl stickers so you can transfer it onto whatever surface you're gonna use. It's just an easy, effective, and it's got a grid pattern on there. So I lay it over the chassis, get my rough size before applying it and making my final edits. The benefits of using a clear medium like this are that you can mark your panel holes very easily. I used to just use blue painter's tape, but I prefer this method a little bit better now. Once I've got the template done, I just drop it right on top of some 0 0.025 inch thick aluminum sheet. Put it right in place and then cut around it with a pair of tin snips. Pretty simple to get that very first rough shape. Once you get it fitted to the chassis, I do some final working with a very tiny hammer just to get the edges to wrap around tubes where I want and make sure that the fit is appropriate. Since the battery was going to be under the hood of this body, I wanted to make sure that the hood came on and off easily, but I also wanted it to look good. So ideally that was going to mean a hidden hood latch. And I had these quick latches here. Now they're just a, a simple automotive race car type part. Usually it's a one button release and just snaps in place. So I designed up a small mount that would hold the quick latch and it would go you know, on the bottom side or up underneath of where like the servo winch would typically go. With it installed, I then designed the other side that this has to hold the stud that goes down into that quick latch. So I designed up a part based off of the 3D model of the carbon fiber hood that I already had made. To make sure that I got it in the right spot, I made this 3D printed template that would properly locate that little piece exactly where it needed to be. All of this was done in CAD originally, so I had all this information, so why not use it to my benefit? Once the first test fit I checked, it was a little bit loose, not exactly held down as tight as I wanted, but that was a very simple adjustment. All I had to do was tighten down that stud a little bit to suck it all a little bit further down. It's nice to have that adjustment and in the end it's very secure once adjusted exactly how I want it.
I also decided to glue the grill in just so that I never had to worry about it popping out or anything like that. To give the build a finishing touch, I took those same panel templates I made and I scanned them in and sent them to my graphic artist and had him create me some printed vinyl wrap for this. I didn't want to completely cover that hood up, so the sticker that I had made for the hood, I made sure it was windowed so that I could see through and actually see all of that carbon fiber and gold flake, and then I just trimmed it to fit as needed. Wiring of this was fairly simple. The Fusion Pro makes things much simpler yet. Beyond that, we have the front steering servo. I actually ended up swapping out this 888 for the Smart 1100 from Reef. So I wired in an extra direct power JST plug in case I decide to go to a direct power servo. And then I also wired in a JST for the rear taillight power. I also have a Reef's 179 servo in there for the dig. Nice, powerful, tiny servo to make sure that dig functions as good as possible. For the tail lights, I had a new plan. I wanted to do a clear see-through tail light. So when you look through the back of it, it, you can't see anything. Just some clear plexiglass with a little bit of a design milled into it. Since I was going for a Cadillac look, I decided to also include the Cadillac emblem in the clear cutout in the back side of the grill as well. Once I had the acrylic machine down and cut to size, I removed the whole backing and it just dropped right into place. As you can see here, you can see right through it, but you see the details that I machined in. Then I cut a piece of roughly three inch Cobb LED strip. This is a super bright, almost seamless. And when mounted over the top, it makes those engravings glow. Nothing else but the engravings. So kind of a different style look. From there, I made a detail ring for the back side of the tailgate to clean everything up where the panels overlapped. Again, I made this out of 0.5 millimeter thick carbon fiber. And then it all went together for the last time. The no hardware scene, one touch removal front hood design with the 3D printed grill turned out excellent. I love how that looked. The gold flake in the top coat resin was a, a great extra hint. I'm running Vanquish Gold impact wheels on this from KMC. I think they have a, a nice match to the gold flake, to the gold and the graphics, and I think they go along with the Cadillac theme of the Hackalack name. Now I did go with the Trans Am inspired graphics on the hood, but that's a throwback to my very original YouTube channel name, Bird Reynolds. The front inner fenders have almost a seamless 3D print without any post-processing, just right off of that bamboo. I'm <laughs> super impressed with that printer and just can't wait to do more with it. 
The interior is simple but effective. The center console helps that whole transmission kind of blend away. The nice depth of the seats gives it a good look. The dash is clean and simple with a little bit of styling to go after what the Cadillac of this era would have had. The 3D printed seats came out fantastic, even though there is some, you know, bumps and humps and things like that in there to accommodate covering up the motor and servo. It all came out. I'm really, really pleased with the end result of the entire interior. Also that extra detail of including the front firewall to help close off in the battery compartment was absolutely worth it. One thing I didn't show was this power button detail of the rear bed. You can see I incorporated the fusion power button into that rear basket. It's hidden, but captured. It allows me to just reach back there and press that power button. The switch can't go anywhere and it's held in there with the 3D print, not with double-sided tape or anything like that. But it also still gives me access to the programming port on that Fusion Pro. I'm super happy with that and <laughs> something that I'll probably incorporate into more builds in the future. The rear inner fenders and the rear exhaust all just help to add some interest to the back side of that open bed. And then you can see the little cap that I made for the rear LED housing to work for those rear taillights. Those rear taillights are always on, so not exactly uh, high tech there, but I think that it worked out pretty well. I did swap out the stock shocks on this truck to the 80 millimeter S8Es from Incision. Those are, uh, those really helped to bring the ride height down of the base camp kit. The base camp kit sits really tall and I think this really helped bring it back into a, a reasonable stance. One thing I never showed was these 3D printed boat side covers for those sliders. Those sliders had a lot of windows, which helped for access to bolting it on, but didn't leave the smoothest transition. You can see the bottom side of the exhaust here and the X-pipe detail that I put in as well. That exhaust is actually two pieces and it has a, a slip joint area that go over top of each other. Here you can see that carbon fiber trim ring to help clean things up. And of course, one of my favorite parts of this, that rear tail light assembly, see-through but glowing. Couldn't be happier with how that turned out. I also like the exhaust exiting in the center. That easy access battery mount with room for the 1300 milliamp Gen Zase LiPo that I've got up front. Makes for quick and easy battery changes and I just think that this whole little system is actually a really well built, easy to use trail truck for this style. The final electronics package in this was that Reef's Smart 1100 Servo, a Hobbywing Fusion Pro, and the Reef's 179 Micro Servo for dig shifting. And again, that Genzase Tattoo brand, 1300 milliamp battery, 75C. The first test drive in the backyard was just a quick there and back to make sure that it all functioned, including the dig. I actually got this thing done a few days in advance of Axial Fest, which is just not my style. Getting done ahead of time felt really good, but I hardly knew what to do with myself. I didn't want to drive it too much because I didn't want to get it all dirty. That way I can go to Axial Fest and still have my clean, untested truck. Overall, I'm pretty sure that this thing will drive just about how I expect. This whole build came out as well as I could have expected. I'm super happy to get it on the trail, and I'll show you that footage from Axial Fest. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I really did. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already, and hit the notification bell so you see these videos as soon as they get uploaded. As always, Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.